got rebar sticking up out of the ground here. Obviously, there used to be another bridge here that they have demolished, because I'm seeing the rubble, there's rebar sticking up out of the sand. There's a piece of rebar right there. That's a good sign. It's a good sign and a bad sign. It means that can attract flatheads, because there's structure out there. There's some current breaks out there, and it's bad because you can flat out get hung up. The river is very swift, but it, it, the bank kind of cuts out this way, creating a break in the current right below a bridge. Looks like a good spot to me. I'm 344 miles from the house in Savannah, Tennessee, which is known as the catfish capital of the world. Years ago, 94, I first moved to Tennessee. They had this old stuff on the television all the time called CMT, country music television. Well, I got to noticing when people was watching it that there was these things called Shania Twain videos that would come on. That got me interested in watching it. As years went by, the Shania Twain videos kind of faded off the air, but I still kept watching, hoping they would play an old video. Then along came this guy named Daryl Worley. He done a song called, uh, I believe it was Good Day to Run. In that video, they're driving by a sign that says, Savannah, Tennessee, catfish capital of the world. Now me, being new to Tennessee, but having catfishing in my blood from where I used to live, that video stuck in my head, that sign stuck in my head, Catfish Capital of the World, what does that mean? He later on did songs called Tennessee River Run, and I realized that that town, Savannah, was right on the Tennessee River. I always told myself one day I wanted to go fish. The Catfish Capital of the World, here I am today. It's uh, September 20-something, and the bite in downtown Knoxville sucks. Knoxville is the beginning of the Tennessee River. It is a reservoir. It is highly controlled by the dams, but there's a lot of wide water and there's a lot of slack water. There's also a lot of deep water. In other words, there's a lot of places when it gets hot that catfish can elude the bank fishermen off the bank. Anybody that lives or fishes around Fort Loudon knows summertime, late summertime, is not the time to be fishing Fort Loudon. I figured fall was coming around. I knew I would do good, but until then, I needed a catfish video because I've got a YouTube channel. Road trip, people. 344 miles, I could have went the same distance and I could have been in Kentucky, I could have been in the Carolinas, I could have been in Georgia. But I didn't really want to cross the state lines because I didn't really think I could afford another fishing license. Two and a half tanks of gas later, in my big V8 truck, here I am. Tennessee is a long state. It's long this way, it's short this way. And I don't really know what happened, but I believe back in the old days, when the forefathers first started this country, there was only like 48 states. And somehow, later on in the future, uh, they somehow added two more states. And I guess, trying to fit them two more states in, they had to compress Tennessee to get them other two states in. But either way, Tennessee was probably shaped like Ohio was back in the day. But now it's long, but not very tall. There ain't a place to sit nowhere out here without getting a bunch of sand in my butt, and I'm too lazy to go up to the truck and get my fold-out chair. Here, fishy, fishy, fishy. I shouldn't have to call them too much. They ought to be here. After all, this is the catfish capital of the world. They've got to be here, man. There's water out there. We'll know here in a bit. After driving 344 miles one way, I'm probably going to stay here for a little bit. Must have been a gar. I don't need none of those. Last time I took a long distance trip, that's what I got was gar. 
If I get another gar, he's bait. So far, it's been slow. Checked my bait a couple times. Didn't have no bait. Was hung up. I didn't have to break the line, but I was locked up in something. There's a ridiculous amount of bugs out here. I'm having a bit of a problem with what I'm seeing here. And one of the reasons I came here this weekend was uh, I was out riding around Fort Loudon. I noticed the water had dropped about a foot. I'm like, well, that's gonna probably make a slow bite. I'm like, I'm just gonna go somewhere else. I can see the wet on the sand, and this water has probably dropped about two foot over a period of the last week or so. So I don't know if it's the drought that's doing it. I don't know, but either way, we're experiencing water drop, and water drop ain't never good. Either way, there's water out there. There's got to be a catfish out there. They still got to eat, right? Even if there is too many bugs out here. This is a new reel, MXJ 5.8 Magic Cast Abbott Lever Drag. All right, people, Catfish Dave here. I'm at Pickwick Landing State Park, the lower end of Pickwick Lake, 344 miles from the house, man. Uh, I'm just gonna start out by saying this has been a lot of driving, and so far it's been a rough trip. I wanted to fish downtown Savannah. Wanted to fish the bridge up under there, and I had got this idea in my head years ago, and it finally came to happen, but when it happened for me, I messaged a guy that fished that bridge and he told me the bite's been terrible. Well, I'm already halfway here, you know. Well, I get down there and I find out why. I set up on the bank and you can see where the water has recently dropped a couple feet, maybe three feet. And I don't never do good on water drop. Could be some high pressure going on. I don't know what happened. Uh, I set up on that spot and uh, quite a bit of work climbing everything down that steep bank. I stayed out there several hours that night. All I got was a gar bite. I'm still 344 miles from the house. I got me a few hours sleep at the Quality Inn. Didn't shower, didn't even change clothes. And here I am, I've still got bait. Now I don't know what this lake looks like normally because I don't fish it. But what I'm hoping is that the reservoir section is still normal level and hasn't experienced no drop. A lot of times that happens where I live. If Fort Loudon drops, I can go to Watts Bar and it hasn't dropped yet, you know. Kind of running from the water drop. There's a lot better times of year I could have picked to come here. But the reason I came here was there was about a foot of water drop that had took place in Fort Loudon here over the last couple days. I didn't fish Friday night. I went out and seen some boys fishing. And they was in a spot that should have been getting at least getting some dink bites. They wasn't getting jack squat. And I'm like, well, if the water drop is going on here, this might be a good weekend for a road trip. 344 miles later, I'm still getting the water drop. Hopefully on the upper end of this reservoir out here this morning, after a five and a half hour drive, hopefully I can pull a fish out of this reservoir spot. On my initial uh, ride into the area, I stopped here first. I went down to Pickwick Dam, hoping for some skipjacks. There was nobody fishing down there but one person. There were no skipjacks to be found at Pickwick Dam. I scoped this area out here, and I checked everything on the Navionics. I'm at a point here, and there's you know some close to 30 foot holes out here in front of me. And this one that I've got casted to the right is kind of a little V in of the deep water, but there was something on Navionics. I don't know how to identify it. I don't know if it was some kind of underwater pipeline or something for what, I don't know what, but I've got that Avit reel chunked towards that. Looked like some kind of flathead opportunity to me. I don't know, I ain't no expert, but there was something down there identified on Navionics. I like the way the uh, deep cut had come in into this little cove here, so I threw it out there. Got one frozen skipjack head, two pretty fresh gizzard shed heads, 344 miles from the crib.
I have no idea what that was. It really took off, didn't get a hook set. Sounded like a small striper. I don't know if y'all know how critical this is, but if I don't pull a catfish out here, by the time I get home, I'm gonna have 700 miles in a trip for no catfish. Now this looks more to me like a fall and winter spot here, the lower end of the reservoir like this, the way it's set up. Probably a great place November, December, but it was close to the main road. I don't really have time to experiment all the way up Pickwick Lake today, so I really need a catfish here. I should have got out here earlier, but I was lazy. I'm pretty sure that's catfish. Short, fat, Pickwick Lake, blue kit. Catfish Dave coming at you from the catfish capital of the world. Fresh gizzard shad got him. I've had one 
decent meal since I got here, and it was at a place called the Hickory Pit in downtown Savannah. About half a mile from the Savannah Bridge. I got a large barbecue sandwich and a loaded potato. It was loaded with cheese and bacon. It was actually quite a good place, a very small place. A few women in there running it. I was quite satisfied with the meal and the price wasn't too bad for what I got. From Savannah, Tennessee, Pickwick Dam, this is Catfish Dave with another one, signing out.